As we promised you one more time in 2023, Three Dog Thursday is back from our friends at Winning Cures Everything and winningcureseverything.com. Great to be back. I am merely the somewhat competent host, TJ Reeves. He is the purveyor, the operator. I love the college football inside of Gary Seegers. Back aboard on Three Dog Thursday as we finish up the college football season. Gary does a fantastic job on this site as well as Bet US TV's coverage of college basketball. Good to be with you. Gary was sharing with me off the air. I think I lost track at seven Christmases that he's done with his family, his siblings, his in-laws. It's Christmas week. Uh, it's Christmas month. Uh, it may bleed into 2024. Good for you. Keep opening the presents, <laughs> gifts, extra foot, food. Good to be with you. And good to have the end of the college football season about to be here over the next couple of weekends, including the CFP and the championship game. And it's about to be New Year's. Gary, great to be with you once again, one more time. Of course, it's great to be with you as well. Yes, I. It, it, it's so funny. We start this whole thing with college football in August, right? And, and really, a lot of people start diving into camp and whatnot in July and et cetera. And once the games get here, it's you never want the games to leave. And then you get to the end of uh, December and the beginning of January, and it's like, I just need a breath. I just need right. a, just a few minutes to be able to calm down. And we got that in the middle of December. Right. You know, we had the one weekend with Army-Navy. But this has just been, with all the, I've got three kids. Three kids. Right. And it's mayhem. Constant. And they don't care about the spread in oh. the Iowa-Tennessee game, by the no. way. No, they do not, which is moving <laughs> as we're talking right now, thanks to thanks to all the Joe Miller. Of course, right before we do this, right before I'm about to do the uh, the Bet US show, we have this big news about Joe Milton opting out. So that right. moves the lines and it changes a bet that I was gonna it's just a it's, it's a mess. constantly moving. So it's let's just let's pick up on that point and we'll get to some handicapping in a little bit. Thank you for finding us. If you're only hearing us on the podcast, come see what we look like. Gary's done a great job with the video. Uh, coverage on this and his own stuff as well at winningcureseverything.com, the Winning Cures YouTube page. That's where we are. You'll see what we look like if you're only hearing us. If you are hearing us, you can take us, as I like to say, in your ears, wherever you go with your AirPods, your earbuds, <laughs> whatever the case is. Uh, and here is in podcast form at Three Dog Thursday, wherever you get podcasts. So you get both here on the show. We give you some handicapping. We've been really good at times with the college football handicapping. There was one stretch when we were like 10, one and one over a three week period in November on giving you underdogs. So we have this caveat you just mentioned. It has become increasingly difficult to handicap, especially in advance of more than a day or two any of these games because of the opt out suddenly players are suspended a lot of times uh you know they miss curfew they're academically ineligible but now the opt outs have become the bigger deal and just as a general comment you're mentioning the news that Joe Milton the Tennessee quarterback is not going to play in the Citrus Bowl on New Year's Day against Iowa looking out for his NFL future can't say that I blame him but he's one of numerous players that are doing this the week of and it makes it a handicapping nightmare give me an overall thought again Gary about this and so I, I don't blame these kids for deciding to opt out of these games. Uh, I do wish that there was some kind of a cutoff date or something to where, and, and that's a, just a personal thing, right? right? I, I would just like to have a little more information. But, I mean, when it comes down to it, if you're Joe Milton, uh, just that specific example, you are going to look terrible against that Iowa defense. Why would you make that your last film before you head off to the NFL True. combine. Right? True. So, uh, I wish these kids would not have to opt out of the games. That's what I wish. But I do think in some cases it makes a whole lot of sense because uh, the, the grander uh, powers that be have basically told them that these games don't mean anything. Now, I still enjoy them because I can see what the future is going to look like for some of these teams. But I just, it, it does irritate me because it's, I want it to go back to what it used to be. Sure. This is the not old man to. and me talking. It's not and, going uh, to. It's never going to be that. It's never going to be that way again. But but <laughs> we, we should say that there is hope that it, when the playoff is increased, and you know you and I have gone round and round about whether that's a good thing, there will now be 11 playoff games instead of three. And the likelihood yes. is for the biggest teams – that are involved in that 12-team playoff, you aren't going to see these opt-outs because they're going for the whole thing. So at least that is some glimmer of hope 
with that. But I can't blame Brock Bowers for saying, I've got an NFL future to think about for the Georgia Bulldogs as a tight end. And this game coming up with Florida State doesn't mean anything about that. We didn't get in the playoff. I, I can't blame him yeah. uh, along with some of these others that are looking out for their NFL future when you have coaches abandoning teams that are in prominent bowl games to go get a better job somewhere else or go take an NFL job or whatever they choose to do. So I, I can't uh, you know I can't blame that the the players it's now come around to them make business decisions and at least in the Milton case just one more time you got a few days notice before that game is yeah. played as we're releasing Three Dog Thursday it's not like this came out on the night before the game on New Year's <laughs> Eve before the game that he's not playing or and a lot of schools love to do this where they suddenly um, uh, show up on the day of the game and so and so and so and so and so and so are suspended and or team rules violation not playing in the first half at least this is a little bit of advance notice that's just me this saying is, this that is on three dog thursday now you have you've certainly got a very good point there yeah it's uh it's mayhem it's absolutely it mayhem. but you know what the bowls have been a lot of fun uh all the people that that bought into the whole idea of kansas uh having the flu and whatnot before that guaranteed rate playoff game uh, or not playoff, excuse me, bowl game. Right. Uh, yeah, that, of course, Kansas ends up covering after Rock everybody chalk. goes in and buys. I mean, it's <laughs> it's an information game once you get to this point of the bowl season. And sometimes you get good information and sometimes you and get sometimes bad information. sometimes you don't. And sometimes so, you get disinformation. You get exactly. what they want you to, th not just misinformation, but they want you to think they're sick or hurt or beat up or infighting or or whatever. All right, so let's get to what this show does, and that's underdogs in uh, in college football. So I've honed in on one disclaimer that I just shared uh, with everybody is I don't know if there's going to be suspensions or opt outs as we do this, but I have been looking at the Ole Miss Penn State Peach Bowl matchup Saturday noon Eastern time to kind of get the weekend revved up New Year's Eve weekend, then New Year's Day. Uh, the SEC, this just in, newsflash, the SEC has been really good against the Big Ten over a long sample size of about 20 years in these bowl games. And it surprises me that Penn State remains a favorite. So I'm going right to Ole Miss. Unless you want to talk me out of it on the fly, I'm going to Ole Miss getting the four and a half or the five here on Three Dog Thursday with Jackson Dart at quarterback. They can run the football as well. Penn State's got some some issues with their coaching staff, Gary, that you're going to share. I'm looking at this as a gift, as a late holiday gift here that I'm getting points with the SEC team against the Big Ten team at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta Saturday at noon for Three Dog Thursday. This thing has moved a couple of spots to five and a half, and then it's dropped at a few more places to four and a half. So, so let's give you the five and a half. Uh, I, I'm not going to disagree with this. I... I'm staying away from it as far as a a big play. Now, once you know, once the game shows up and whatnot, and I will want some juice or something, I'll probably put a little pizza money on Ole Miss. I think that Ole Miss really, really wants this game. Right? Lane has lost the last two ball games. Uh, Penn State typically does this, but when Penn State goes up against Utah in the Rose Bowl or Memphis in the Cotton Bowl, something like that, uh, they have a a very distinct advantage. When it comes to Ole Miss, I don't know the Penn State roster is that much better than the one that Lane Kiffin has assembled down in Oxford. I I don't believe that Penn State has seen an offense that will do what Ole Miss is going to do in this game, right? Jackson Dart is playing. Uh, all their receivers, are one, they've got a couple of guys that are banged up and whatnot, but you've had a month to be able to heal up. So far as I know, the only guy that they're really missing is the right tackle. Right. Um, uh, Pettis, I believe is his name, he got hurt in the Georgia game. He's out for the rest of the year. But you've had time to be able to figure out that spot, to build a little more depth there. I, I think they're going to be able to put up some points on Penn State. Not a ton. I think it'll still be a relatively lower scoring game because you know Lane Kiffin likes to run the ball. For the full season, I think it's about a 60% clip. They want to be able to run the ball. And I'd, I, they're not going to run it much on Penn State. But I think that they're going to be able to take some deep shots and whatnot against that Penn State defense, especially without Manny Diaz. Uh, and both both coordinators for Penn State are gone. Uh, because Mike Yersich got fired. They hired in the guy from Kansas, but he hasn't really been putting in his offense yet. And as far as the defense goes, uh, they just hired Tom Allen from Indiana. And yeah, they, they don't have his defense in yet. So you got several, several big key opt-outs for Penn State. Yeah, I, I think... 
Ole Miss, what they're doing in the portal right now, obviously that's got nothing to do with this game, but it lets you know that they believe that this is their window. They are gearing up for that 12-team playoff next year, and this is a good spot for Ole Miss to come out, get a win, look good, and start kind of revving up heading into next season. And again, uh, we keep talking about injuries. Remember Matt uh, Corral, the quarterback for Ole Miss, got hurt in that Sugar Bowl right away with an ankle injury. And there's the there's the comeback from the players saying, I got to protect myself uh, injury-wise in games that don't mean anything. But I think Ole Miss, I, I saw Penn State uh, working the game on national radio on Compass Media Networks at the beginning of the year with, with West Virginia for what it's worth. They looked pretty good with Drew Aller and the running backs. But in their biggest games, they didn't do much it, offensively, especially in either one of them. I just think this is Ole Miss on uh, on Saturday in the Peach Bowl. So give me the Rebs. I think they win the game outright. So the four and a half, the five, or the five and a half, it's just gravy. Give it to me. <laughs> give it to me like the sides uh, on the on the uh, holiday dinner plate here, and I will take Ole Miss for Three Dog Thursday. So you and I are going to talk college football playoff. Uh, semifinal games, Rose Bowl, Michigan, Alabama, and then obviously the capper is the Sugar Bowl, Washington and Texas coming up. Is there? I know you're not going to handicap another one. Is there anything else? I was intrigued by Florida State and Georgia, but then Tate Rodemaker, the quarterback for Florida wow. State, says, hey, the handwriting is on the wall for me to not be the quarterback here, and I'm just going to go ahead and go in the transfer portal rather than risk getting roughed up, beaten up, and bludgeoned. Yeah. Here's your point again about, about game tape by the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, again, it's it's not a perfect world, but when we you have a calendar, but like, that's again, the biggest thing. I know, but, the, fix it. Oh. but when you have coaches, again, I'm going to keep coming back to this. When you have coaches that will say, my team made a New Year's Six Bowl game and I'm still leaving to go coach another program or to go coach in the NFL, how can you fault players from doing the same thing even though it's a New Year's Six game like what this is in the yeah. Orange Bowl? And that well, line and if you're is... you're Rodemaker, right? Like, here's, here's the part with Rodemaker yeah. is... Florida State has openly been recruiting guys that are going to come in to start next year. Instead team. of him. Exactly. Instead of him. So if if you're him and you see the writing on the wall. Off a concussion in the Florida yes. game as well. Already got your brain scrambled in the Florida game. Couldn't play in the ACC championship game the next week. Yep. I don't yep. blame him. But I'm no. saying for Three Dog Thursday purposes, that line is the size of like my twin teenage daughter's phone bill. It's too big, <laughs> and I don't know what to make of it because I don't think Florida State can score. But I just it's, I'm going to stay away. And here we are again with it's and up so to Gary, 19. Is, is yeah. 19 now? Is there yeah. anything else that stands out to you before we get to the CFP semifinal games? At at this point, at 19, I mean, I would probably have to take Florida State uh, because How do they he, score. That's the biggest. Can they run the ball on Georgia to put 14 Defensive points? Defensive touchdowns, Defensive special teams. Touchdown, there's a, maybe. There's, this is what we have learned, right? We thought this with Ohio. We thought this with uh, multiple teams this year that, oh, we've got third-string running back, third-string quarterback, this and that. Western Kentucky was down to their third-string guy, and they go down 28 to nothing to come back and, and end up winning the bowl game, right? It's it, You never know what's going to end up happening, and – you know, at least with the uh, the Florida State kid, uh, with the guy from uh, uh, Millington or Covington or whatever Tennessee, uh, the third string guy that, that mm -hmm. played in the uh, in the ACC title game, right? He he at least has experience against a really good Louisville defense, and he can come out in this one if Georgia decides, eh, we know we're going to win this. We don't really care. Florida State could put a couple of touchdowns on the board. Like I I could absolutely see it happening because they do have some depth it's not great it's not georgia level depth but it all depends on how much georgia really wants to be there the last time that georgia was in this situation where they had lost out on going to the cfp they went and played texas in the sugar bowl and got beat you yep. know i so i maybe I come back to yeah. how does florida state score brock glenn is the kid's name brock glenn That's brock it. glenn threw for 50 yards 5-0 <laughs> against louisville i don't know I mean, against Georgia, how they move the ball and how they score in that yeah, but game. Now he gets now he gets a bunch up. of first team reps, and I, that's okay. the thing. None of us knows, right? Who knows what to expect from this? Uh, if you wanted to take the Florida State team total right now is under thirteen and a half, so or thirteen, go under thirteen mm. if you think that's the the right way. I'm staying away from it because I have no, I don't know these kids, I don't know these I players. 
So it's, I understand. It, it's just well, there's mayhem. another one just real quick. We'll get to the playoff games in just a second, but there's another one real quick, and that is in your neck of the woods, my alma mater. I'm from Memphis uh, as well, and I went to the Liberty Bowl as a little kid several times, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. They keep correcting me to say the sponsor name. <laughs> uh, and that is Memphis and Iowa State, and Rocco Beck is a Tampa kid where I live, the son of Anthony Beck, the former NFL tight end, the former ESPN broadcaster. That's an intriguing game. That's an intriguing line. I would be interested in Memphis, but again, we don't know about opt-outs, etc for that game coming later in the week off of Three Dog Thursday as we release the video show and the podcast. But it's just interesting that Iowa State is a double-digit favorite in that one. Again, I'm not taking it, but I mean, so there's, I, there's, yeah. I took Memphis at eight earlier, like when bowl season opened up. And it's, I didn't put much on it, just, you know, a little bit of pizza money because I, I thought that Memphis has a pretty good shot of winning the game outright. These are two high-variance teams that you you really depend on explosive plays both of the defenses are going to get scored on. Uh, the total in this game right now is only 57 and a half. Interesting. But if you if you start like really looking into the advanced stats, it, the fact that this thing is up to 10 and a half now, do we really trust Matt Campbell, who is one in three in his last four bowl games, to be able to win a game by double digits against a team that really knows how to score? Memphis, I understand, has got two offensive linemen, starting offensive linemen that transferred out. Aside from that, they still have all their weapons. Like And they have got some dudes on that offensive line that I think are going to be just fine, especially against Iowa State. Uh, Iowa State's got, I believe, uh, TJ Tampa, the uh, the cornerback that's going to the NFL. He's not going to play in this game. What an appropriate name to be, on the, to be on the show with TJ from Tampa. <laughs> and I remember doing an Iowa State-Iowa right. game two years ago where I'm going, I'm TJ from Tampa, and TJ Tampa just made that play for there Iowa State. So we'll there see. Uh, so, again, that kid's a, a question mark. And can Rocco Beck make plays with his legs as well as his arm here? Uh, He'll be able again, to do whatever he wants against that Memphis defense. We would think so. We <laughs> would think so. And it's going to be fascinating. So, we have that game Friday. We have these Saturday games. We Again, the Iowa-Tennessee uh, game is early on Monday. I also will be working the lsu uh, Wisconsin game. There's opt outs again on both teams there, including the Heisman Trophy winner, Jaden Daniels, is not playing for LSU. So, what we're saying to the audience yeah. is it's just tough to handicap those. So, yeah. let's get into it. Alabama, Michigan, CFP semifinal Rose Bowl. Are you looking as strongly as I am at Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide with a month to prepare for this game off that win over Georgia? What are your thoughts, Gary? for Three Dog Thursday reasons on this Rose Bowl semifinal. Nick Saban in postseason games where he has more than three weeks to prepare, he is 11-1 and one straight up. <laughs> and now you're going to get him as a dog? I, I mean, what are we what are we talking about here? Uh, look, I, I understand the love for Michigan. I get it. But you look at the past six weeks of the season, and this Michigan team is nothing like what they were at the beginning. A lot of people saw this Michigan team as this dominant force, especially once they got into Big Ten play, and they are crushing these lesser-than teams, right? And that's no offense to these Big Ten teams, but there's obviously a difference here. But they have not seen anything close to what they're going to get with Jalen Milrow. Uh, Alabama's got stud receivers, and it's not names that people really know right, right. now because they have not fully developed, but they've got some dudes on the outside know that Michigan's got the secondary to be, to, uh, to be able to keep up with those guys. And as far as this Alabama offensive line, what they did to Georgia was incredibly impressive, right? Uh, if Michigan fans want to talk about the fact that, well, Auburn ran all over Alabama. Yes, Auburn did, but do you have the same zone read stuff? I don't think so. I don't think it's the exact same kind of stuff where they're running delays and they're running all this misdirection. Jim Harbaugh is a meat and potatoes guy. Right. He doesn't hide or disguise any of the stuff that he's running. He's, I'm going to run it right there, and if you can stop it, cool. But I don't think that you can. We, we saw it with the TCU game last year. We saw it against Georgia two years ago. It's kind of the same thing over and over. Alabama has improved, and I think that Michigan has actually gotten a little bit worse. I don't think J.J. McCarthy is as good as he looked early in the season. Uh, the running game, we'll see. I think they're going to be able to run on Alabama some, uh, but they have gone up against teams that are not great at tackling, so they've been able to break off some bigger runs that way. When it comes down to it, you know, I, 
I'm lean. I'm not just leaning Alabama. I think Alabama's going to win the game, and I think when the limits open up, I think you're going to see this this thing switch because uh, Alabama's plus one and a half. Eh, I think there's a two out there somewhere. So you think by um, the time by the time we get to Monday, you could see a lot of money come in, and this thing becomes even, oh, or yeah. even Alabama favored. It'll it'll open. I think the but, I think the limits will open up on uh, Friday or Saturday. And that, that's when you'll see it switch. For our purposes right now on Three Dog Thursdays, we always say throughout the year, the number is either one and a half or two, and you and I are taking the tide. I'm in agreement you with you. Uh, Michigan's strength of schedule out of the conference, terrible from earlier in the year. It's uh, East Carolina, UNLV, and Bowling Green. UNLV ended up having a good year. but yeah, Bowling Green uh, wasn't bad either. But, I mean, but, Ohio, the Ohio State wins a big win at the end of the year. What else yeah. do you have down the stretch with Purdue – with Maryland, with an Iowa team that couldn't score. We all knew they were going to win by three touchdowns in the Big Ten title game, Michigan. This ain't that, folks, with the Crimson Tide uh, coming in. And they've had success in the Rose Bowl, as you've mentioned, in the Rose Bowl Stadium, in the Rose Bowl BCS uh, title game with Texas. Give me Alabama here with you on Three Dog Thursday to advance to the college football playoff championship game. Uh, And that reminds me that if you are looking to get into the, into any of these bowl games, including the semifinals, the Rose bowl with Bama and Michigan, uh, the sugar bowl with Texas and Washington, do it with our friends at ticket smarter. We've been utilizing them all throughout the college football season. You're going to take $10 off a $100 order, but let's be honest for tickets to the Rose bowl or the sugar bowl in the playoffs, the highest end of the bowl games, you're not getting in for a hundred bucks, the best seats. You're going to be spending like probably 10 times that. So use the promo codes WCE10 for an order of $100 or less, these bowl games and the CFP playoffs. But use WCE20 if your order is $300 or more. Take $20 off with Ticket Smarter. Great uh, secondary market pricing, as competitive as any that you're going to find with their algorithms and what they do. Your purchase is secure and guaranteed. Go ahead and utilize Ticket Smarter for those reasons and also use our promo code WCE20 for an order of $300 or more. Again, if you can get into any of these different bowl games that we've been talking about for 100 bucks or less, take 10 bucks off, WCE10. But Gary Seegers, we've done a great job of promoting, and there are a lot of people responding off of uh, Winning Cures, and we say thank you, the salute to them. Do it one more time this bowl weekend and for the college football playoff. Use WCE20, 20 bucks off a $300 or order or more with Ticket Smarter, the Ticket Smarter mobile app, TicketSmarter.com. Again, as they say, get in the game with Ticket Smarter. Think Smarter, Ticket Smarter, promo code WCE20 to take 20 bucks off a $300 or more order to get in these college football bowl games. So that leaves one more Three Dog Thursday game that we're looking at. Are you thinking Washington Huskies as the doggy neutral field, Sugar Bowl, Mercedes, or actually as now Little uh, Caesars, Caesars uh, Superdome uh, in New Orleans. They have a different sponsor, it seems like, every time. Caesars <laughs> Superdome now. Are you liking uh, Michael Penix? And the, and the story that has been out West, the Washington Huskies unbeaten against Texas here for three dog Thursday purposes. What do you think? I think that I am. I, I think I'm going to ride with Washington. Uh, it's at four right now, Washington plus four. It's more than a field goal. Washington beat this team in the Alamo bowl last year. So there's that there's a little bit of familiarity with it. Uh, look, this, this Kalen DeBoer thing is at some point, yeah, the numbers are what the numbers are, right? And and when you try and break down uh, just the analytics of the game, yes, obviously there's an advantage for Texas. There's a talent advantage. There is uh, a running game advantage. Uh, there's certainly a passing advantage for Washington. But when you just look at the thing overall, I mean, my number for the past six weeks would have Washington uh, by like or an underdog of like six points or so. Uh, Texas overall, I think, is the better team. But when you've got a guy like Kalen DeBoer, and I know that Steve Sarkeesian can draw him up with the best of them, but man, there is something about Kalen DeBoer in playoff games, in bowl games, in Pac-12 championship games, all that kind of mess. This dude is unbelievable. In the NAIA playoffs, his teams were 17-2. and two. He is 103 and 11 overall as a coach. At some point, you just got to trust that the guy knows how to win. Regardless, he could take your guys 
and beat his own guys with them, <laughs> or he can take his guys and beat your guys with them, right? And I, there's nothing that you can really break down that would tell you that Washington is going to win this game, but it was the exact same thing with the Oregon game, right? So now that you've got three and a half weeks or whatever it was to prepare for this game after the Pac-12 title game, I I think at the end of the day, I'm just going to ride with Washington plus the four. Like, I, I think that's the smart way to go. And you've got Penix, who was a Heisman finalist, obviously. You've got the two receivers that I think can give Texas a lot of problems in Polk and Adunze uh, that that both caught for over 1,000 yards. They oh, got the middle's going to be healthy. And they've got, yeah, and, and they've gotten they've gotten time to heal up. And you've got defensive guys, too, that are NFL type prospects. This is going to be a fantastic game. I mean, obviously, Texas can play. They won the Big 12. They won the game at Tuscaloosa. That was a long time ago, though, in September. What does that really mean here in the Caesar Superdome? There, I got it right. Coming up on New Year's night in the Sugar Bowl. I think this is ultimately Washington. I think we're looking at a Washington versus Alabama CFP title game in Houston. Because I think that I think the Huskies find a way. Just like I could not figure out when we left you last, Three Dog Thursday audience on video and on recording, why were they that big of an underdog against Oregon? I loved them outright in the Pac-12 title game, and they got it. I, I again, I like them head up here against the Horns. Hookem doesn't want to hear that, but I like them head up here. I will take the points as well, and I think it's Washington and Alabama one more time in the championship game. Final thoughts from you here on Three Dog Thursdays. We've gone over the bowls. Anything else that we left out? Uh, I don't believe so. I, I think this is a really, really good playoff field. Uh, and I know that it sucks that, uh, that Florida State is not getting to play in it. But I think we got the best matchups. I mean, this is a lot of fun uh, with Alabama and Michigan and, and Texas Washington. I do – I love bowl season. Sure. It's a little chaotic because there it's – there's a too many game games. All the time. First of all, I keep saying this. I've said it for 20 years. There's too many games. They should have lopped off, especially. Well, but out of the <laughs> pandemic year, I understand you're a huge college football guy. Out of the pandemic year, they should have lopped off like six or eight of these bowl games because I don't need to see any more six and six against six and six participation ribbon games. So there's ah, too that that okay. d- that dilutes it. Our eyes glaze over as part of it. I come from the older school because I'm older, where there would be about eight or nine bowl games until New Year's Day, and then the barrage of the seven or eight games would happen. Yeah. Now we yeah. have like 25 of them before New Year's Day. It's crazy how many it's, there are. It's mayhem, right? But that, let me tell you this. Last night was a perfect example of why I am totally fine with having this many games. One, there's going to be people watching them, uh, especially a week like this where it's just the games are all spread out. They're all in solo windows. Uh, Texas State and Rice. And it it wasn't a great game. It was 45 to 21 or whatever it was. But seeing the jubilation from Texas State, who had not ever been to a bowl game before, that was awesome. They drank the stadium dry of alcohol <laughs> they did. by the beginning of they the third did. quarter. Yes, that's correct. Like, that's verified. They, they drew more people. Texas State drew more people to Gerald Ford Stadium last night than SMU did for any home game this entire season. That's awesome. Like seeing well, stuff sure. like that, I love it. But and, those and, are few and far between versus six and six against six and six or even five and seven to get rid of some of these games. I just, I think this is true. But like, I, I take that to mean that you uh, did not enjoy the quick lane bowl with bowling no. green. In Minnesota. No, I did. I did not. But we're about to get to the better ones. And that's the whole point on three dog Thursday. Yes. Uh, yes. Which I will add one more comment here uh, because this has gotten some play and it will, it will maybe pick up a little bit of traction. I still believe this is the biggest cheating scandal in the history of college football, if not college sports with what's happened at Michigan. It is completely tainted. Everything they've done this year is completely tainted. Hopefully, Alabama will take care of it where we don't have to talk anymore about what Michigan was doing and got away with for a while during this season. Um, I'll be curious, how much does that ramp up with a coach that was suspended not once but twice for violations in this season and missed a total of six games that he didn't coach? It's uh, It's been a blotch. It's been an ugly, ugly uh, uh, blight on the sport for this year, and hopefully it wraps up with Alabama. And maybe that's that's maybe tampered so. with my analysis <laughs> that I want to see Alabama do away with it. Because unless you're a Michigan person, I, I, all the other common sense people that have looked at this, you can't look at it as any other way as blatant cheating. 
that was going on. And so their Big Ten title, their college football playoff berth is tainted. It's tainted. I'm, I'm not a Michigan person. The cheating thing did not bother me in the slightest. I think that this is just, they were, how about this? I think they were really bad at it. I think everybody else is doing it. I don't so think everybody, okay, we could go for 30 more minutes. Yes. Everybody else is not doing it. They're not doing it to that extent <laughs> with spreadsheets and matching up to game film and advanced scouting and filming the other sideline. That does not go on. It's tainted. Now, I don't think that they're going to the games, but I do think that they are absolutely getting film and, and figuring out what the signs are and, and doing sheets and sharing it with other teams, et cetera. I do think that that's going on. I No, I know that that's going on. So, you know, it, him going to the games to try and film with an iPhone, like that does not, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. All right. <laughs> just, think well, it's we'll see if Alabama <laughs> takes care of it. And just to recap again, one more time here as we wrap it up, for the college football season, I like Ole Miss, all things equal, with Penn State head up in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. And then you and I are in agreement in the CFP, two semifinal games. We both like Alabama. Two dogs. Uh, straight up. And we both like Washington to upset Texas, which does that guarantee that it's going to be a Texas-Michigan championship game for you and me? I don't think so. On, I don't think uh, so either. I think it would, be too, it would be too uh, perfect for the Longhorns to be in Houston for the national title game, right? So... And there's an argument to be made. Washington people and fans have been making this argument. This may be the best team Texas has played to this point, including Alabama, with what oh, yeah. Washington has done this year. We don't know. Let's see what well, happens. That, in that the version game. of Alabama certainly was not the same version, right? At the so. beginning of the year, true. But now let's see what Washington can do with them. Listen, I have I have been thrilled to be partnered with you at winningcureseverything.com and the Winning Cures YouTube page for Three Dog Thursday for this college football season. We will not come back for the solo uh, CFP title game, whatever it is. But Gary Seegers, thank you one more time uh, for, for allowing me to be here as part of your platform and even closing out book ending here on the final couple of shows as you were with me at the beginning of the year uh, as well. I wish you nothing but health, happiness, and some sanity with all the kids, all the chaos <laughs> at the end of the year. And hopefully you can see some good college football this weekend. We'll be watching you all over Winning Cures, this platform, and the Bet US TV college football show with Parker and Kyle. Thank yes. you again. Thank you again, hey, my friend. One final you. time. It, it has been an absolute pleasure. I've enjoyed this. And it, of course, I didn't get to do it as often as I wanted to. Uh, but I love the idea of Three Dog Thursday. I love this show. I love what you bring to the platform. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And I'm so glad that we got to do it one more time before the year wraps up, right? There we go. So we say to everybody, hopefully you did enjoy it either on video or on a podcast form, make sure you're following, subscribing. You're here for Gary's content. He's breaking down all these bowl games this weekend, CFP, championship game, all of it at winningcureseverything.com. For now, we're good for Three Dog Thursday. For Gary Seegers, I'm merely TJ Reeves. Wolf, wolf with the underdogs. Let's see what happens in the college football playoff. Happy New Year, everybody, from Three Dog Thursday. Bye. <laughs>